This is Plus TV Africa, where big stories live. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time, where we analyze the biggest entertainment stories and trending lifestyle opinions. My name is Elsie Godwin, and to do the analysis and talking with me, I have my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Olua Oshunke. It's good, it's good. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> it seems you'll be waiting to say that. Yes. It's Friday. I'm tired. Okay. So, any plans? Uh, to sleep really really sleep mm -hmm. and then i have to sort out my Something. yeah my thoughts okay. my lives i know if i does not have plans because of covid 19 but it's okay um so um in an interview <laughs> with wsj magazine singer miley cyrus says she is in a unique position and her experience with this pandemic is not like everyone else in her country and around the world she said and i quote my life has been pushed pause on but really i have no idea what this pandemic is like i'm comfortable in my space and able to put food on my table and i am financially stable and that's just not the story for a lot of people end of quote cyrus is said to be currently um self-isolating with boyfriend cody simpsons in her malibu cody mansion Simpson. this is like a disney dream i'm sorry to make it about love but cody simpson and miley cyrus dating Oh my god. You have the right to make it about anything. <laughs> this is COVID 19. I know. Um, it's good that they're all cozied up. Mm -hmm. I've always said it. Mm -hmm. I have tried to give me excuses. I now agree. As to how everybody is feeling it. And everybody. <laughs> and I'm saying, clear. no, not everyone is feeling it. Because even I know that I have some privileges in comparison to like another person. And I know it'll be different for people who have more privileges than I do. This is what I've been expecting and waiting for, some type of honesty and being down to earth and really telling us how it is. Um, I think it's a bit disrespectful when they pretend to be. Not to say that every celebrity is exactly like Miley Cyrus, no, but there's a lot of them. And then they're saying, well, ah, they're together. We're not, darling, we're not. So at least I, she still had some empathy to the fact that you know, not everybody has that. If she came out up in our faces, that would be different. But like, why are you guys complaining? Exactly. But um, she, her life was very honest and and you know, passionate and also empathetic. And I don't think anyone else can ask for more, really. I totally agree with um everything you said because um, the way she put it, you couldn't sh you couldn't go against what she said because she's just telling you what she's going through. It's a personal experience. So the fact that you're having it different and this person is having it otherwise doesn't mean that they are trying to rub it in your face. It's just their reality yeah. and that is your reality. So yeah. um, I think the honesty is well appreciated as well so that everyone can know that, look, hustle hard, do it. You hustle hard. COVID-19 may not mm. be what will make you complain because, mm. um, of course, no one envisaged this, but it happened. Life happens all the time. So how do you prepare for life? I'm just going to write that down, envisage. Did you, did you, is that the word? Okay. Okay, so <laughs> I like her honesty, and like Ifeo Maya has said, um, we we all would expect a level of honesty from everybody, really. But however, still, I'm on this table and saying that I will not put it to anyone to say you are not feeling anything on this pandemic until you come out by yourself to say, yes, I want to be honest and say it is not affecting me. As far as I'm concerned, maybe right now, my not smiley Cyrus, check. Every other person is going through a whole lot, except you say you are not, and I will be genuinely happy for you. I think when it comes to privileges, I, I, don't, I, don't, I was thinking about um, a lot this morning, and I don't think um, money and comfort can only be the privileges mm. that can be accounted for. There are so many things that could be privileges for me and it's not a privilege for the next person and just that way and so on. So I understand where she's coming from. I'm not going to argue her privilege. She, I'm happy she's out to say, you know what, I don't feel what is going on. Um, it is still arguable, but I mean, it is her feeling. So if she says she doesn't feel it, I don't have the right to say you are not going to feel it in any way, shape or form. However, I still maintain that so many people, I mean, we are all in this together until you come out to tell us, no, I'm not in it with you guys. But I think that's she how was, I feel. She was clear. She didn't talk about work. And then talking about, well, yeah, yeah putting food on the well, table and all. But money. talking about privileges, let me just put this um, um, theory to you as well. So, for example, there are people who, as much as we know that there are people who cannot put food on their table at this moment, mm. there are people who can still survive 
without putting food on their table. I'm not saying it is nice or it is a good situation to be in. But there are people who, if they don't put food on their table, they will be dead in the next 24 hours because of ulcer. Now, if you put the, those two people in the same place, then you realize that even the person that don't have has a certain level of privilege against the person that seem to have. So privilege is something that we would define for ourselves and understand that, okay, as human beings and individuals, we all have a level and a degree of privileges and how it works for us. But right now, except you come out to say, oh, it doesn't affect me in any way, shape or form. I, I'm happy for you. I agree with you. But we are all in this COVID-19 thing together. That's how I feel she about it. No, 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 it's not about companions. <laughs> it's about it's how i feel about it so yeah basically uh. okay moving on to the next story the federal government of nigeria has appointed ali baba shek marize bolanle austin peters and others in on a covid 19 committee set up to advise the government on ways to mitigate the effect of the pandemic in the industry the minister of information and culture al haji lai mohammed confirmed the appointment on wednesday during a meeting with the broadcasting Organization of Nigeria. Um, the committee will suggest the type of financing that is best for the industry considering the changes caused by the pandemic. Mm. It's a welcome development, but I don't want to be overly excited about this until I see the outcome and see if they will put the plan in motion because it's another. It's one thing to have an idea, it's another thing to execute it. So mm -hmm. let's see if they can actually execute this plan because... Mm, if you I will not believe in the execution mm -hmm. at all. <laughs> no. Um, we have plans, execution <laughs> is always the problem. Yeah, it is. Um, and I worry about the selection as well. I don't think it's as saturated as I would have liked. I'm guessing that the idea of this election is based on people who have authority, not just like talent and stuff right because a lot of them are not actively creative I'm guessing but I guess, people who are close to the government already. exactly um there's a lot of politics going on to, in into it rather than entertainment which is a lot more scary for me a good example i will pull out is alibaba i don't necessarily see alibaba as somebody that has a lot of people on his payroll for example and the creatives that he's working with i've, I've been to his hmm let me just follow that one but I, cause I, I, the reason I want to tell is because I'm not really sure if and I don't want to express something that's not true. But he didn't look like he had many staffs. Because I'm thinking that if you're going to be paying these people and you've selected them, it's because you want these people to trickle down to the staffs who are having problems with this. Because when I read the initiative, it's about still trying to like lucrate the industry, right? But it looks like you're just lucrating the people who are already lucrated. Mm, but these me. people they're mentioning are not those that are going to give the money. I think they are those that are supposed to tell them how the finance. No, they actually they employ them. That's what I read. Mm -hmm. These people are employed. They're actually going to be paid for whatever work that... The um, advice they're going to give. Yes. Well, well of course, we we'll, uh, expect some level of um, remuneration or something like that. But where I want to go to with this is, I, I know they, they just appointed them and they've not done anything. If they will hear this and do it, nice. If they had it in mind already, amazing. But when we keep saying that we want structure in the industry, when opportunities like this come, even if the government don't do things the right way, I expect that people that have been called to the table would get them into doing things the right way. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because we have associations and what do they call them now? Bodies. Unions. And unions and all in the entertainment industry. As much as we'll come out to say, yes, they're probably not doing so much, I think they're doing enough with the resources they have on ground. We have people like the AGN, Actors Guild of Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, the one they call the mobile something. They have a lot of them, right? I expect that the leaders of them. these um, associations would be part of this team so that the conversation would be a structured conversation not because somebody you feel somebody is the big deal in the industry or the one calling the shots right now in the industry then the person has to be on the table even if the government is not looking at it from that angle because if this conversation if this conversation starts and you have a person like Bonale and Alibaba on the table what they will tell you is we need structure we need structure but if we don't deliberately make the government respect whatever level of structure you, you have, have now it is never going to happen so I, I just hope they put that into consideration and call the people that are actually trying to build a level of structure to the table mm -hmm. into this committee that's how i feel about but it not, maybe not to make everything about criticisms i would i would like to say that it was in terms of the selection that they've done is it was quite diversified um a lot of the times we've already complained artists have complained about it being too monetized to lagos and i think they try to do a good job with trying to get um mm -hmm. different influences from all over so there's the north and the east and all that type of stuff, <clears throat> which I think is also a, at least a good time that they're trying to think about yeah. doing the right thing. So just okay. put that out there. I just hope they execute it nicely anyway, regardless. Moving on, I think it's time for a quick break, but when we come back, we'll have more to discuss.
Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Baba? Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling alright. I still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes I look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early, sleeping early. Welcome back. This is Still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Ghanaian journalist Lord Kweku Sechi in an Instagram post hailed BET award winning rapper Michael Owusu Ado, popularly known as Sakode, for donating mechanized hand washers to the National COVID 19 Treatment Center in the GA East Municipal Hospital, Kwa Benya in the greater Accra region. In the caption, the journalist says, Sakodie says he's stuck in the United States, but his record label has provided the National COVID-19 Treatment Center with a mechanized hand washer made by a Ghanaian company. That is so cool. This mm. is the truth of nation of um, once there's a will, there's a way. Because mm. it's not even in Ghana. It's in America, and it's still... Makes it's time for happen. their president to open that borders for Sakodie to come he back. He really wants to come ah. home, doesn't he? <laughs> it's nice and to see that he loves Niger, um, I said Niger, Ghana, like that. Like, it, I don't know. I, I, I get easily moved by people who do more than just surface stuff. The, he could have just bought a regular face mask, face mask and, and, and just sent it over. But the fact that he went and found the Ghanaian made one, like, and talk about supporting the. Niger uh, <laughs> Well, People are so Nigerianized. That's the problem. Even empowered Ghanaians by in the process, them, yeah, in the mm. empowering and protecting an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah it then. was. It, it is amazing, and it's hard for everyone already. So those are things that people don't really usually think about. You know, like I think that thing is called the apping business. I hope I got the pronunciation right. What yes. is that? Oh, that's the name of the hand washer. Oh, right. Uh, the name. A P I N. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy he's doing this. Um, the founder is A P. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, kudos to him. It's somebody that has really like put Ghana on a you know on an international map and everything. So he's not. I don't think that Ghana should be playing with Sakwa Desha because all. like this I is, think it's this the is biggest their really export people. so far. Yeah. It's hmm. the biggest. Shatawale, yeah, you know. Where is Shatawale? Until he fights, I don't hear anything. Where is Shatawale? Oh wow. Mm. Where's that? He's your guy that you are defending on this table. So if I it's not work, Ali, I'm just yes. joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to the next story. A federal judge has dismissed a sixty million dollar sex um, tape lawsuit against Kevin Hart. The lawsuit was centered on Kevin Hart's 2017 sex tape scandal. A California judge ordered the dismissal of the suit without um, prejudice. Right? Mm, without prejudice. What um, does that mean? Mm. To dismiss it without prejudice. Without, um, when you say you're dismissing Bias. a case without prejudice, is that you're not being biased, you're looking okay. at all the facts of the case and you're okay. making sure that it's in order before you dismiss the case. Should we go on? Mm -hmm. That's why you're here now. <laughs> so, to tutor us. Okay, it was yesterday that we were boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh, yeah, okay. not today. Okay. Not today. Sorry. All right, so um, on this one, I think it's based on the fact that um, the case was filed in a place that it's not its jurisdiction, it doesn't mean it's name. over. Mm. Is it not the same case that they flung the, the this thing ahead? Yeah, him? so it doesn't mean it's <laughs> over. I think the um, victim or should just follow due process. But you know this is the second time she's filing and it's being dismissed again. Um, maybe the that's why they said without prejudice because they're not being by. They're checking all the facts and details of this case and see is does it add up? Is it mm. something we should take on? Because we need to realize that this case is also cost the state as well. Mm. Do you understand? It's mm. not just so you cannot just bring anything out because you feel you have a case. But on a serious note, it. I don't know how you are hoping to get a whole sixty million dollars from a case and you cannot get it right. Like this is the second time, so we're expecting a third time now. And what exactly is going on? Is it that? 
your lawyers are not prepared or they don't understand how to go about things in the I right manner. I think the first time it was because the order wasn't well served to Kevin yeah. Hart. That was why it was dismissed. Yeah. So it wasn't dismissed based on the ground like, oh, you don't have anything That's to say. That's what I'm also getting at. Yeah. I don't think it's about the fact that she doesn't have a legit case. I think sometimes the law just works in other ways. It doesn't even matter what you're bringing. It's about the representation of it. Um, they haven't even gotten to the point where they're saying, like, we have a trial and they're looking at evidence. So I, I'm not a lawyer and I couldn't understand much of what was going on but it seems like the processes around this it, the first was how he was served the second was in the state that it was done so yeah, it's, it's not what i'm fine. saying why can't they get the process right yeah i don't know i think he also has a very good lawyer that is like mm. needs picking um a lot mm. of things and he has enough money to be able to do that so and he's going through all the clauses and but he's saying all the loopholes and he's blocking mm. yeah. it so yeah. <laughs> That's a good lawyer, right there. Yeah, mm. I mean, it's a good lawyer. I don't know about, about Kevin Hart. Um, Kevin Hart recently, What's though. What's your deal no, with Kevin? Oh, please. Um, Kevin Hart recently, though, I have to say, is try. It seems like for the first time, he's actually trying to really look inward. I think this wife that he has is probably onto something. Um, he's the way he's talking now. He's doing a lot more acknowledgement. For me, I'm not about to like sit here and pretend to you that he's a great guy, but I like that he's acknowledging that he has things about him that needs to be worked on. And for me, acknowledging is like the first step to healing so he he's been a nasty person but he looks like he's on that journey with this new child and everything that has come out and all that type of stuff i like that he's vocal about it because then he can show other men that yeah you can be scum once upon a time but you can work on that and i just hope that this lawsuit or whatever maybe gives him the grace to just you know shine yeah, like yeah person. just let him have this one so that he can be better and stuff but like yeah we'll see Okay, moving on to the next story. Social media is such a little, little weapon mm -hmm. um, that allows the closest person to you come friendly, all smiles with real accounts, and simultaneously use fake accounts or proxies to hurt your brand reputation and image with lies, half information, plus blackmail. Social media is now deadlier than gun, knife, etc. That's coming from Nollywood actor Yomi Fabi. Is it still going on about the um, Tony Abraham. Abraham and all I wasn't that. even going to mention Tony Abraham. I was going to say... When um, any known Yoruba actor come out to speak, this is usually their modus operandi. So mm. is this how they operate this, yeah, exactly. in their circle? I think that is what they and that, do. That's what I got from it. I don't think this is social media. Anyone who can take the time to create make it create another account. account. If there wasn't social media, they'll have done the same thing in real life. They'll send somebody. Uh, yes. Um, so <clears throat> or they will buy a new SIM card to call you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's it's unfortunate that humans are there, there's a lot of evil in the world and people have very dark hearts. Um, and one one thing that really scares me in terms of like people's characters are the ones that come off otherwise. Some people that you meet at first and you're like, yeah, this person is not a nice person, <clears throat> and that's fine for me. It gets more tricky and I get more terrified about life when the person is so good at masking their evil. <clears throat> that, mm. that throws me off a lot more. That's um, the worst. That, it well, is the worst. That's the reality <clears throat> of the world we live in. I think that's what you... you had, these days, you don't know who loves you for, for mm. real. Because everybody just tends to come up to you like, oh, I love you, I love you. And mm. then when you hear the things they say behind you, Lord. Which is why it's just fun to be a lunar fan. Yeah, but, yeah, long wolf. On, yeah, and, and also, so I think the, the the spin that you can put in terms of social media, it just, it's just like it gives you a lot more confidence because you can hide. Mm. That's the only thing I would say that I agree with. That's cowed. cowed mm. Mm. But besides yeah. this is theory and somebody going behind someone, I think social media can be really dangerous for those who want to be evil. Because mm. it's just um, right now, when you especially when you have people that call themselves influencers without integrity. What they want is the money. So you pay them and they spin anything and tweet anything. Mm. You can actually in one day bring down a person's reputation if you have the money. Um, maybe the person can come back to to refute it. And if you also if the person also spends a level of, of amount of money, they can push that all out from Google and um, make sure they present the right thing. But it is it is really bad. And we can see politicians using that as well as a tool. Um, you can see people that are now um, ruining the Me Too movement using that yeah. as a tool as well so um social media is good and of course it has the bad sides and we just have to be careful and also as a people when we are digesting any form of information especially when it, it aims to um tarnish a person's image let's just take out our time to fact check and say what we think um, uh, right. because of the COVID 19 period a lot of things have been kind of like Calm. re like brought up to the surface mm -hmm. and we're trying to like redigest and like see whether or not we want to we want it to go back to normal we want it to retract like, a good example is like our, our carbon print on the earth trying to like see if we can minimize um you know pollutions or whatever another 
one that I wish I saw more coming into, into topic is actually technology. I think at, at some point, humans are going to have to sit down and stop for a second because we keep, we keep creating far, things, yeah, we keep creating things that have really positive sides, but then the um, negative sides are really fine, scary. And at some point, we have to really decide, do we actually need this positive side? Um, a good example is the chip that's in your body when you, because of health and you're on a track and all of that type of stuff. Like have the way, yes, that? yes, they have. Okay. Um, so you have to start thinking about it, like when going forward, like think about your your children's children, like the teenagers right now. I can't even, I can't, I, I don't even. That too much for me. Now imagine their children, like, and so it has. I have to start thinking, like, are we going to get to a point where we just say we don't actually need these things? I mean, COVID nineteen has taught us that we don't need a lot of things that we desperately thought that we needed. Yeah. So it's something to think about. We need to slow down, Please. right? Okay, um, that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching and join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or Twitter Tosa Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. My thank you, as always, go to my co anchors Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshunkaye and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay safe. <laughs>